into Africa Utility Week now. Investment opportunities around renewable energy are plentiful. However, many countries on the African continent may be setting too ambitious goals and not accounting for the capacity of their existing grids in accommodating new sources of energy. CNBC Africa's Thomas Marie reports. Here's that report. With load shedding expected this coming winter, South Africa is one of many African countries where the demand for energy outstrips supply. Round two of South Africa's Renewable Energy Independent Power Producer Program has reached financial closure with 19 projects comprising of wind, solar and small hydro facilities expected to see a capital investment of 28 million rand. I think renewable energy is an integral part of an energy mix of any nation. To achieve energy security, you need to tap into renewable energy because one, it helps you be, uh, shave your big demand. Two, it helps you to uh, address rural areas where tapping into a grid is extremely expensive. Uh, it is, a, it, in many cases, actually, renewable energy now, solar, is becoming very, very much comparable to, to grid power because of, you know, solar prices have dropped by 80%. And wind energy is dropping in, in many countries now. Wind become again grid compat compatible. So the opportunities in uh, renewable energy are huge, and the costs are getting are, are becoming uh, smaller and smaller because there is a lot of hidden costs with an in, in fossil fuel that doesn't really get to be measured. While in renewable energy, it gets to be expanded and highlighted. I think the future for energy ends. Africa generally and South Africa has a lot to do with renewable energy and that is a fact. You know, with the solar, with the wind, with the geothermal and with hydro, you have huge natural resources that is just doesn't make sense you don't tap into them. Meanwhile, the South African government has expressed concern over the capacity of the existing grid to absorb additional electricity from renewable energy projects. The IPP developments in Africa are much slower um, and power plants are coming on stream much slower than anybody would like. Now there are many many reasons for that. Uh, fundamentally the, there's one major fundamental reason which is that many governments in, in Africa sell the electricity to their consumers at a price which is less than they would have to pay an independent power producer to buy the power. So they operate at a loss. The reason for that is the affordability of electricity to the consumer. So there are lots of discussions about what the tariffs should be, should the tariffs be increased, and you, you end up with a dilemma which is that you know, if you increase the cost of electricity and people can't afford it, it becomes a, a, a political problem. Tariff determination is a key theme under discussion as many African governments subsidize their energy sectors, making it difficult for independent power producers to recover their costs. Okay, first of all, I think what's important for regulators is, to, is, is for them to establish uh, credibility uh, and uh, legitimacy um, for tariff setting, uh, credibility for investors and legitimacy in the eyes of uh, consumers. Um, and um, in terms of um, reaching uh, uh, cost reflectivity, as it were, um, it remains an important point for many utilities across the continent. Um, and, but if you look at the track record that regulators are beginning to set now, a lot of uh, regulators have given significant awards to utilities, and utilities that were cash strained uh, for many years are beginning to see um, to, 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 that strain is beginning to get eased um, of them. To attract investment in African utilities going forward, Kapika advises that regulators across Africa ensure that their policy frameworks provide predictability and certainty when it comes to tariff determination. Thomas Marie, Cape Town, South Africa. Right, electricity is the key to delivering on Africa's promise. That was the theme of the World Economic Forum on Africa last week, delivering on Africa's promise. All sorts of talk about agriculture, all sorts of talk about infrastructure, but electricity and energy was one of the key themes as well. Now listen to this, I quite like this, um, this paragraph. It says, most of us are familiar with the satellite image of the world at night showing Europe and parts of Asia ablaze 
with light, but despite its enormous size, larger than both China and the United States combined, Africa remains dark with only a few pinpricks of light here and there. It's quite an atmospheric sort of evocative uh, paragraph. The author of that paragraph is in the studio with me now. It's Dr. Nawal Al Hassani from Mazda, and also joining me is Stefan Padlewski from DuPont Photovoltaic Solutions. Dr. Stefan, thank you very much for joining me. Thank um, you for how me. important is this? I mean, I, I keep on hearing about renewable energy and I've heard about it ever since I've been reporting, but it never seems to take off. Is now the time? It is the time. There's a huge potential, untapped potential here in Africa, and there is a huge growth. You know, I'm, I'm sure in the economic forum you heard, in 2030, the population is going to double in Africa. To, to compete with that or to be able to equip for that, you need your electricity production to double by 2020, and that's very short term. There is no way that can be um, done in, in traditional resources. There is huge potential. You look into the potentiality of renewable energy in the region, and it's it's it's, it's very it's very high. You have uh, you have one of the highest uh, uh, rate for solar in uh, per square meter in the world. You have I think more than 1,700 uh, uh, kilowatt hour per square meter. This is extremely high. You have areas where wind is is on high potential, and the, you, you have you know, a lot of rural remote areas that can benefit enormously from off-grid solution. So there are huge potential, mm. there is need, but we have to deliver on it, of course, don't, of course, don't we, Doctor? Of and Stefan, you know, there's a great film, it's called The Missionary. It, it came out about, around about 25 years ago, starring Maggie Smith and Michael Palin. And there's a, a, a Michael Palin was the missionary, and Maggie Smith was uh, hoping to give him some money for his, whatever is his cause. And she looks into his eyes and she says, does it always, does the sun always shine in Africa? And he gets this dreamy look on his face and says, yes. Now that leads me into your uh, business at DuPont, Photovoltaic Solutions. Is it that obvious? So much Sun, so much potential. Well, absolutely. I mean, you know, the uh, sun is the feedstock. You know, it's the primary source of energy, actually. So, I mean, if you look uh, globally, what is really interesting is uh, the biggest market is really not in the shiniest place at the moment. Uh, the European, uh, you know, in Europe, you know, you do have the largest market, and not the, as much sun as what you get in uh, in Africa. Basically, twice as much sunshine. So, the uh, of course, you know, this. I like the picture actually that you referred earlier because we do use it uh, internally as well, just to display and to show how much opportunity will exist, uh, exist in Africa. Now we know that there are about 600 million inhabitants who do not have access to electricity. Now the beauty about solar energy is, is, that, is that it's scalable and it is distributed, so you can really bring the, the solar power close to where people will need it. So you don't need mm -hmm. to deploy very cost, uh, costly uh, infrastructures to carry the electricity to the people. So, so we do see absolutely a great and fantastic future for solar energy. In I have occasion to drive through the fruit growing region of, uh, of South Africa series. It's about uh, two and a half hours from here. And the workers' cottages now, the more progressive uh, farms, uh, have solar panels on all the, the workers' cottages. I mean, that's the sort of thing you're talking about, the accessibility of renewable energy, like solar, for example, into these rural areas. And it, it, I suppose that's one of the points you've been trying to make, Doctor. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the other thing is, we, we been in this conference and you hear about how much most of the small media enterprises and even large corporation and uh, everybody who's operating in Africa have uh, a backup system either in uh, diesel generation or whatever generations they have and that's extremely expensive it's, it's very expensive it's it, it costs much more than in, in some cases solar so and solar cost and I'm sure uh, Stefan can confirm solar cost has been dropping dramatically it's dropped by 80 percent and what sort of cost are you talking about? The, the cost of it, the actual infrastructure, the putting the it in, hour, or the actual the total, the the, the energy that's generated? Yes, the generator. Sorry, energy. tell us again, how much has it fallen? Uh, it's fallen by 80%. And it's, and it's again, it's declining because mm. it is, you know, the, the technology is, is out there now. The efficiency is increasing. And there are so many solutions that is being implemented and it's needed. We uh, very recently, I don't know if you heard uh, about uh, the uh, Sheikh Zayed uh, PV plant in Mauritania. Yeah. Uh, Mostar has integrated it last month. And 15 megawatt of PV panels that is generating enough power to uh, power 10,000 houses in Waukesha. And this is 10% of the total capacity of Mauritania grid. So there are 
a lot of opportunities there. And it is, uh, you know, the, the, it, it is something that has been tested and implemented. So it's not a new technology, nothing to be afraid of. Mm -hmm. the, you know, the, there are some challenges related to storage, but it is being addressed. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to improve with time. Mm -hmm. But I, I do believe, you know, that is the future of Africa has to be based on energy mix. And you cannot have a proper energy mix if you don't take into consideration renewable energy. Some people say this to me, though, and I'll address this to you, uh, Stefan. This was a cynical person that was in this studio a couple of weeks ago. He said, you bring in all this technology, which costs a lot of money because we don't produce the technology that, that we need in order to generate solar power, and it costs billions and billions. And then it gets plugged into the grid and it doesn't get exported. So what it's doing is putting a further burden on the current account defic deficit, the budget deficit, etc. Is that a purely capitalist and sort of short-term view? Well, I guess it's a short-term view because, uh, you know, what, what, what we anticipate for the, for, the, uh, for the African market, it will grow. Uh, it will grow to a point where it actually become uh, it will become uh, uh, at, uh, attractive to invest or to deploy an upstream market, the manufacturing uh, infrastructures to the regions. So it will eventually come in. You know, when the market becomes a gigawatt scale, uh, it will be uh, it will be interesting actually to deploy uh, up, an upstream activity as well. So this this view is uh, in our in our from our perspective is only short term. Uh, eventually, uh, more manufacturer will will come, and we heard uh, that during the uh, Africa Utility Weeks. Actually, that mm. people are talking about that as well, and, uh, and to address this concern, this very very concern. Yeah, that you have. Doctor, you say, I've got your, one of your um, pieces um, here. It says, "What do you think are the biggest challenges to the South African African energy market?" And there's a couple that you you mentioned. I want to mention one now, and that is the fossil fuel industry, who always seem to try to squash the sort of uh, energy sources that you are promoting today? Um, I, I, the two industries at one point needs to be at, you know, at reaching parity actually. Renewable energy in many cases in many countries have, reach, have reached great parity. And they, there, is, there is a market that is maybe not competing with each other. You will have, as I mentioned, in Africa there is a lot of urban uh, and rural areas that would definitely benefit much quicker and in a bigger scale in with renewable energy because there, is, there are other things that is associated with renewable energy, which is job creation, uh, poverty elevation, uh, you know, uh, health and social impacts where you are reducing pollution and you are reducing risks related to fire hazards, etc. There are so many um, uh, social challenges that renewable energy can address because it is at the heart of what this industry is about. It's a knowledge-based industry, but it's as well an environmental uh, solution to a lot of the, you know, a lot of the problems that we are facing globally. But again, when it comes, if we look, at, we look closely to Africa. This is even more urgent when it comes to Africa. Okay, final uh, sort of wrap from you, Stefan, first of all. By 2050, let's uh, come up with a random date, 2050, and we look at the energy mix of Africa. How much is going to be coal and oil and, and, and other fossils, and how much is going to be renewable energy, solar, wind, etc.? Well, it's, it's, it's a difficult question, uh, but, but, you know, certainly much more on a renewable space, uh, the way we see it. I mean, it's going to be very hard. Uh, within uh, such a short period of time to uh, displace completely uh, the conventional source of energy. I don't think it's the objective of uh, the industry to do that. There are some technical challenges, the storage being one of them. Uh, having uh, uh, having an uh, intermittent uh, source of energy, you know, you, can pr you cannot provide, uh, um, uh, it cannot fit all needs, obviously. So you will need a mix of, of, uh, of uh, energy sources. Some uh, regions, some other regions have set some objectives in the 20%. Uh, we heard that uh, Madagascar has set a much more aggressive uh, objective around 70, 75%. Mm. That's going to be challenging. I mean, it's good to set a very aggressive objective. It's nice to be so opt optimistic. <laughs> just want to wrap with you, uh, Doctor. Is this a full start? Is this just another interview I'm conducting and in 10 years' time there will be no progress? Very quick answer, please. I think the progress is happening. I think we are seeing it. Uh, happening very, very quickly as uh, there are targets that have been set by the African countries, there are investments being put in place, and there is a global recognition of the potential of this industry here in Africa. Thank you.